Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I am walking you through this really cool angelic grunge aura effect that we can put on our text and our logos. And the really cool part about it is that this effect is live. So you can switch out the text or the logo with no problem and you'll still have the same effect applied. Before I begin, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that little notifications bell. I post content like this every week to help you become a better designer. This is a nice and quick effect, so let's get right into it. All right, so you can see that effect here. It's really cool. We got this kind of grungy aura surrounding this text. And it's got this nice blue tint to it or cyan tint. And that text is of course live, like I said. So if I wanted to change that to say anything else, I can do that. Now I'm gonna break this all down for you real quick. So first step, obviously you wanna add your text, but before you do that, make sure that you're working in a 300 DPI document. I would always recommend working in a 300 DPI document. It just allows more resolution for your graphic. So just make sure you're in 300 DPI by going to image, image size, and checking on the resolution here. And of course, I'm using 300 DPI. Cool. So now let's go ahead and add our text in here. So the font that I chose for this was your style extended. Of course, you can use any font you want, but I really like how the effect looks with this font. So I'm going to type in our words here. I'm just going to go with angelic. All right, cool. Looking good. So once you have all your text or logo set up, Let's say you have multiple layers of text or logos like I have here. I have two different layers with two different pieces of text. You just have to put these in a group. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to press Command G on my keyboard to put that in a group. And I'm going to name this group text. And I'm also going to put this group in a group by pressing Command G. And I'll name this group anything you want. I'm going to put Angel Grunge Effect. All right, cool. Now our next step is to go into our text group and set the fill of this to zero. And that's going to hide our text. But don't worry. We're going to fix that in just a second by opening up the layer styles panel of this group. So go ahead and open that up for the text group. And from here, we're going to add a ton of drop shadows, which you can see I already did here, but I'm going to reset the list and I'll do it with you. So just go to the drop shadow of your layer styles. This is not what the default would look like, but we're going to mess with these settings anyway. So what we're going to do is turn the distance all the way down, turn the spread all the way down, make sure the color is black, of course, and the opacity at 100%. And most importantly, make sure you uncheck layer knocks out drop shadow. This is very important. As you can see now, our text is no longer hidden because we turn that off. And that is, of course, the most important thing to making this effect is actually being able to see our text. Now what we're going to do is change the size of this to six. And then we're going to duplicate this drop shadow and incrementally increase that size. So I'm going to duplicate this drop shadow by pressing the plus icon here. I'll go to the bottom drop shadow and I'm just going to double this size to 12. And we'll keep doing that until this looks about right. So I'm going to duplicate this, go to the bottom one, double that to 24, duplicate that bottom one, set this to 48. Then I'll duplicate that, go to the bottom one, set this to 96 and so on. We're going to do this until we reach 192. So that is just one more drop shadow that I'll duplicate, go to the bottom one and set this to 192. And that is looking pretty good. See, we already have that real nice kind of aura effect going on our text. And this is looking good, so I'm going to press OK. I'm going to hide this annoying little effect panel here. And now we're going to add a levels adjustment above this text. So I'll go down to my adjustments, choose levels. And you don't have to play with this right now. I would recommend waiting until we add the rest of the stuff to play with this. But you could go ahead and if you want, turn down the white values over here or just drag them to the left to get more of a harsher or more contrasting spread on that drop shadow that we just did. But of course, I'm just gonna play with this later once we have all the other effects dialed in. So I'm gonna bring this all the way back down to the default and we'll just get started on the other effects to get that angelic grunge look. So what we wanna do next is add either a grain layer or a photocopy layer or photocopy texture rather on top of this. And if you don't have one already, there's a great website that has these for free. So go ahead and navigate to your browser of choice and just search up Texture Fabric Photocopy Texture. They have some great high resolution textures for us to use. I'm going to go to images here and then I'll set my, where is it? I'll set the size to large so that we only get the high quality ones. And we're going to drag one in here that is sort of in the mid-tone, so sort of close to a neutral gray. So I'm going to go ahead and find one of those. Something like this is what you'd be after. Of course, this is a bit darker than a neutral gray, but I can just change the levels of this when I bring it into Photoshop. 
So we'll go ahead and copy this photocopy texture layer and I'll put that in Photoshop. I'll make sure it's sized correctly to my text. As long as it's covering all of your text, you should be fine. And I'm going to set this to more of a neutral gray by going into the levels here. I'll press command L and I'm going to drag my midtones right in the center of this Gaussian spread here. And that's going to get us real close to a 50% gray. So I'll press OK on that. And now just set this layer to overlay. And now we effectively dialed in this really cool grainy look to our text. But we're of course not done yet. We need to add colors to this and of course some more textures. Let's do the color first and then after we'll start focusing on the textures of this. So I'm going to name this layer my photocopy noise layer just so I know which one it is. And then I'm going to add a gradient map on top of all this. So I'll go into my adjustments here choose gradient map and then I'll go into the actual gradient of this and right now it's just a simple black to white all you have to do is click somewhere around the midtones here and change this color to a nice sort of cyan or whatever color you want really but I feel like the effect works best with a kind of desaturated and bright like bluish cyan color so something around here I think looks really good that looks fine to me so I'm gonna press ok on this and we've got our color dialed in now we need just some more texture on this so I'm gonna go back into my trusty browser my trusty Google Chrome and I'll just search up grunge texture now when you do this you're gonna get a ton of textures that suck so what I'm also gonna do is make sure that it filters results from texturefabric.com which I just love that site so I'm gonna put in site and then colon and then texturefabric.com but of course if you have grunge textures saved on your laptop or whatever just drag those in I just want this to be, you know, accessible for people who don't have those textures. So I'm um, using these free ones from Google from this great site, Texture Fabric. All right. So now we're presented with the dilemma of what textures to use. There's so many. So all I have to do is just drag shit on and see what works and what doesn't. But this is a pretty cool texture. I want to use this in this design. I'll drag it in. I'll scale it to cover my text. And here you just want to experiment with blending modes and so on. This is actually super low res. Hold on. There we go. That's the correct one. All right, so now I'll, I'll resize this to fit my text. And I'm gonna experiment with blending modes here. So let's try something like screen or overlay. I personally would go with overlay for most of these. And as you can see, this is kind of fucking up our text here. And that's because the texture is really dark. So when we set it to overlay, it's gonna darken our text. And we can get around that just by brightening up the texture and doing what we did earlier in terms of setting this to a more neutral gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the levels panel here for this layer. And I'll drag this midtones to the middle of what resembles sort of a Gaussian spread here. So I'll just try and find a place where it looks good, basically. And I'll press OK. And this looks pretty good, but it's a little too strong. I'm going to turn the opacity down on this maybe to like 50 or something like that. And I'll drag this around, see if it looks good in any particular place. All right, looks cool to me. Let's put some more textures in here. At this point, you just want to really experiment and try like whatever you can find in terms of textures. So something with like you know, interesting patterns like this or cool drops like this will be great for this effect. So I'll drag one of these in and I'll set that to overlay or soft light maybe. And I'll scale this down and I'll mess with the levels a bit as well. So I'll drag these values in. Cool looking good. I'll drag that in a little bit more. Turn the opacity down. And let's do this with some other textures. So go back here thought this one was pretty cool I'll drag that one in and, and I want to desaturate this actually so I'll bring the saturation down then I want to make this more of a neutral gray so I'll bring the midtones of this using my level slider more towards the center of the distribution I'll press ok I'll set this to overlay or soft light or whatever you can honestly experiment with any of the bending modes as we can see a lot of them give some pretty interesting effects like linear light here looks pretty cool I'm gonna try that out and then I want to mask this to just certain parts of our text so I'll create a mask for this and I'll invert it using command I on my keyboard. Then I'll take a soft brush, which is just a brush with 0% hardness. And I'll paint in that texture at different points where I think it might look good. You can also mess with the opacity of the brush up here. I'm going to turn this down to about 60 so that the effect isn't too harsh. And I'll just paint in here wherever I think that effect could fit. So maybe around this X a little bit, around the A or G or something. Kind of get some cool bleed in there. I like that. Around the C looks pretty good too. All right, cool. Now I'm going to drag in just one more texture and I'm going to set that one to a lighter blending mode, something like screen or lighten, just so we can get a more diverse grunge effect on this. So maybe I'll choose this texture looks pretty cool. I'll drag that one in. It's pretty dark, so I'm just going to invert it with command I and then I'll set this to screen or any of the light blending modes. Color dodge looks pretty cool. I'm going to go with screen though. 
and then it's a little bit too bright so i'm just going to turn the levels down on this a bit using the levels panel so i'll bring these values in and it actually looks super cool so i'm going to keep that around here and then i'm gonna do the same thing with the layer mask i'll make a mask on this i'll invert it using command i and i'll paint in this effect wherever i want using a soft brush one thing i actually forgot to mention or i just didn't see is you want to make sure that your photocopy noise is on top of all of your grunge layers but make sure it's also under your gradient map layer so i'm going to bring that up here on top of all my grunge textures now we just get more of a tasteful fade in our layer masks because that kind of noise of the photocopy is almost dithering that that soft brush that we're using so i'm gonna bring this on top of all my grunge textures and in fact i'll put all my grunge textures in a group just to organize this better all right cool so now i'm just gonna keep painting on this layer and find something that i think looks nice so i'll paint in here a little bit i think that looks pretty cool we'll get some detail off the a as well that looks pretty cool. All right, I think we're mostly done here. But if you remember, we also had this levels adjustment earlier that we added, and that's for a reason. We're gonna drag this all the way on top of our noise and our grunge textures. And here we can just mess with kind of the intensity of the effect. So if I wanted to make this darker, I would drag the midtones to the right. Or if I think it's too dark, I would drag that to the left. Or if I want just like a tighter spread and more contrast on this, I could bring in the white and the black slider or even just the white until I really dial in the kind of effect that I want. And I think this is looking real good and pretty faithful to the original effect that I displayed. Maybe I'll change up the colors a bit in the gradient map. Of course, that's completely still editable. If say you want like a orange or yellow or whatever, I kind of just want that cyan back, but maybe a little less saturated, something like, I think that looks cool. So I'll press okay and cool. We got the effect pretty much done. And of course it's still live. If we want to go in and edit our text, we are available that is an option that is available for us so you can edit your text as you will and that effect will still be applied as long as all the textures that you dragged into your document pretty much just cover the entire space that the text takes up so yeah super cool effect really versatile can use this on a lot of designs to liven up your text but otherwise that's pretty much it for this tutorial thank you as always for watching i always appreciate your support if you have any questions or concerns make sure you leave those in the comments below and also be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you learned something in this tutorial i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer thanks again i'll see you in the next one peace out